name is Tom Donardo. We're here today with another episode of The Wine Zealot. Today we're in Penticton, British Columbia as part of the Northwest Wine Summit and a wine competition. And uh, the three of us are judges participating in the wine competition. Today I'm interviewing Zach Brown and Julie Powell with Alderley Vineyards out of Cowichan Valley, Vancouver Island. So why don't you guys tell me a little bit about yourselves. How long has the uh, Vineyard and Winery been in business? Well, Alderley Vineyards was uh, originally planted in about 94, and the first vintage came out in 98. Um, so it's one of the four oldest wineries on Vancouver Island. Wow. Um, we took it over a little over a year ago when the original owner retired. And uh, it's sort of for us, it's a 20 year arc of the dream to have our own winery and wow. sort of stand on our own two feet and grow our own grapes and all that sort of thing. So. So you took over existing vines, right? Yes. How long have the vines been planted? Uh, like I said, uh, you know, nobody in the early days, he was really one of the pioneers, Roger Dossman is the man who planted it, and nobody knew what would grow in the Cowichan Valley on Vancouver Island. It was really sort of pioneering. So he started with 35 different varietals wow. and sort of narrowed it down to the uh, about eight we have today. And um, so some of our vines date from the very first plantings. How many years ago was that? Uh, 1994, oh, so, okay. so uh, like our Bacchus and our Pinot Noir are some of the oldest vines on the island. And then there's some more recent plantings. There's uh, been uh, Sauvignon Blanc, we're one of the few producers of Sauvignon Blanc on the island. And that's probably about 10 years ago now that some of that was put in. So it's been a sort of evolution figuring out what the market would buy and, and also uh, um, what would grow there because uh, one thing about Vancouver Island, it's such a coastal area that it's really site specific. So even in the South Valley, you know, they're growing things that are slightly different than we're growing in our vineyard. For example, we grow Merlot. We make a very small amount of it, 120 cases, but uh, there are very few places on the island where you could ripen a bigger red like Merlot. So it's very much sort of a region that's focused on Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris with some German varietals and that sort of thing. So, so it's all Vitus vinifera, right, Julie? No, no hybrids? No, we do actually have some hybrids. Uh, um, oh. Some relatives of Cabernet Sauvignon, so that would be Cabernet Foch and Cabernet Lee. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just found that uh, we put those into a blend, a uh, wine we call the Matrix. Okay. Um, and, uh, but for the most part it is, uh, it is vinifera, but we do find that those hybrids actually thrive fairly well. And again, it's a, it's a bit of a difficult climate sometimes because it is cooler. Uh, but we do find that those uh, actually uh, thrive and they, they do make some very good wine. Now for those of you who don't know, hybrids are basically uh, Vitus vinifera, which is European typical grape varietals that we know that's grafted with American rootstock. And so what Julie was just discussing was a couple of hybrids which tend to be more weather resistant, cold weather tolerant, etc. So both of you are winemakers. Were you formally trained or did you just start off as sort of a garagista type of a movement uh, and then you sort of obtain the training? A, a little bit of both really in my case. I, I first learned to make wine um, in 1994, an auspicious year, but in, in about uh, 80 kilometers from Vienna, just on the Czech Republic side wow. of the border. Working with uh, you know the cool climate things like Muller Turgau and Riesling and a little bit of Pinot Gris, and then the red side of things, Blau Frankish and, and uh, a bit of Pinot Noir and that sort of thing, and it was very traditional winemaking. What what we would call today natural winemaking. Right. There was no additives. Just crush it, destem it, you know, uh, let it let it rock, and then put it in the barrels for native malolactic and all of that sort of thing. So like, you started sort of as a cellar rat and then worked with Yeah, the yeah, the I worked with a, sort of a, an older master vintner, a man named uh, Joseph uh, Shevchik, who surprisingly, I didn't know before I went there that, you know, the history of winemaking in that area is just as old as it is in Austria or sort of wow. northern Italy. Or, and, um, you know, it's something that survived the communist era. And so this was the early 90s, just coming out of that era. Yeah and there was a real sort of push for more quality. So I sort of started in that real old school, natural uh, wine in non-interventionist winemaking. And then I was in Australia for a number of years as well. I spent six years in Australia and-, and Which uh, part? In Western Australia. I was based in Perth, but yeah. um, I was going to college and pretty solid chemistry background. So I was 
on sort of college breaks, I was doing lab work, right. cellar hand right. stuff, picking grapes, all of that sort of thing, and, and it was sort of ignited a passion, and then for the following almost 20 years, we became um, hardcore home winemakers. Nice. Uh, we had like a commercial type of operation in, yeah. in, the, in the quality of the equipment and the techniques we were using. It wasn't your sort of Uncle Tony's wine you drink right, at, right. at weddings mixed with 7-Up. It was, we were making some pretty, you know, hardcore good wines. We were sourcing grapes from like John Caldwell in Napa, getting it shipped to Montreal and, and later Vancouver by an Washington and BC fruit. And out of the Columbia Valley. Yeah, yeah out of the Columbia Valley. And so I was just gonna say, I didn't mean to catch you off, but I wanted to also ask a little bit about your wife's yeah. wine making background. Sure. Uh, so really actually just started when Zach and I got together and uh, got married and moved to Montreal and became garagists and so I've been sort of a... So you had no formal training either no, sort of... No, no, just a really a seller at and learning by, you know... Did Zach sort of take almost. the lead and... Absolutely, yeah. yeah, and obviously his passion, you know, we yeah. both were quite passionate about wine in general um, and just the opportunity to actually start to make it ourselves and kind of go on the journey uh, in terms of different varietals and, and wines from different regions and, and that kind of thing was uh, was really you know, something that excited us both and it had us thinking that eventually, you know, wouldn't we like to maybe do this as a career yeah. and, and go beyond, you know, the, the corporate world and, and do something we're really passionate about. So you mentioned 35 grape varietals. How many wines do you produce commercially? Uh, at Alderley, we, we produce, uh, under the Alderley label, uh, Bacchus, Pinot Gris, and we do a skin contact style Pinot Gris, Sauvignon Blanc, um, and then the reds we do Pinot Noir Merlot. We have a, a, a wine we call the Clarinet, which is actually an old vines Foch, Marcel Foch, so that's another hybrid, probably the first real successful hybrid globally. And then we've got the, the Swiss Black River Islands as well, the Cab Foch and the Cab Lee. And uh, how many cases do you produce a year, Julie? Uh, about 2,000. 2,000. So, so small, small production winery. Small production. We'd eventually like to, to grow where we can, um, but uh, we're limited a bit on our site. It's seven and a half acres planted on the ten acre lot, and we're kind of maxed out. Uh, but eventually, as I say, we're, we're one year and about three days in. So uh, we'd eventually like to look up the other opportunities to grow production. So I would like to make a plug for Zach and Julie's wine, Alderley Vineyards. I've tried it as a professional sommelier, and I think it's some of the best wines I've had out of uh, Canada, and specifically British Columbia. So if you have a chance to get onto Vancouver Island, you'll definitely want to pay a visit to Zach and Julie of Alderley Vineyards. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.